Welcome, everyone, to episode 11 of the official podcast for Guardian One, a Destiny group dedicated to the prosperity of Guardians everywhere. We broadcast live Thursdays at 7.30 Pacific, 10.30 Eastern, right here on twitch.tv forward slash Guardian One Network. My name is Remy, and tonight I am joined by SDF River. Do you even blink, bro? <laughs> Crimson Warlock. Now it's a party. Jez. Hello. Leo. How's everyone doing? And returning for the second week in a row, Preston. We are going to be talking about all things Destiny, but first, housekeeping. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. Be sure to check out the Guardian One website at guardian1.net. You can, all fo- uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at G1Net. That's G1NET. This is the only instance where we use the number one again. That is at G1NET. You can also send us feedback at our email, feedback at, feedback at guardian1.net. We also have a bungee.net forums group. And right now, I think we're sitting at 98, 98 members. Uh, if you want to join up, just search for the group name Guardian1 over at BNET uh, right Guardian 1 has its own clan, so if you want to join the Guardian 1 clan, we cater to both platforms, but I think right now we can't uh, do anything with clans, because they turned it off until the launch of the game. So whenever uh, 9914 comes around, be sure to join the clan over there. We also utilize the forums for comments and feedbacks. So be sure to join the conversations. Big thank you to all those who are currently in the Twitch chat. You guys are awesome. Again, we broadcast the show live at twitch.tv slash guardian one network uh, thursday nights at 10 30 p.m eastern 7 30 pacific if you can't catch the live show you can always go to our youtube channel at youtube.com slash guardian one network again we are part of the guardian radio network it's the partnership that we have with the guys over at guardian radio so be sure to check out the guardian radio network website at the guardians of destiny.com they also broadcast their podcast in 30 uh p.m. Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, every Monday night at twitch.tv slash Guardian Radio. You can also follow their Twitter account, Guardians of D, and their YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Guardian Radio. They have the iTunes feeds. If you're on iTunes, check out that. And be sure to leave some feedback, as iTunes feedback is extremely valuable. They have the main Guardian Radio podcast, the Warlock School, which is their mature comedy podcast. Uh, I believe right now they're about to start up the Tied the leader party chat. You guys are familiar with them. That's the uh, TTL clan. That's what DJ's clan, right? Yep. And they also have the audio drama Ghosts and Echoes, which the last episode of that will be coming out soon. That's it, Remy. Back to you, man. Awesome. Thank you very much, River. Uh, and is it true what they're saying in the chat that today is your happy birthday? Yeah, yeah, that's 100% true. <laughs> you don't sound so stoked <laughs> about that. Uh, well, <laughs> well, uh, I mean, we're all getting older, man. <laughs> that's uh, should we actually sing to him? I think no. that we, I think that we should actually. No, sing you to shouldn't, because uh, I'll probably just leave the chat <laughs> if you do that. <laughs> I'm gonna advocate not singing as well. Thank you, sir. Well, hey. Much appreciated. Hey, don't worry. When the traveler oh, come comes back and brings you from the dead, it resets your age either way. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think uh, you age continues okay fine and you'll death. be a thousand eight hundred and twenty or whatever that works for me <laughs> well i don't know well then why do why do are there so many young looking uh young looking warlocks out there you know like i think i think you're right i think it does reset so you just have to wait 700 years until society's collapsed and been taken <laughs> over by uh <laughs> taken over by another race of uh, multiple three. races <laughs> three <laughs> that we know three. of uh, right? Who knows what's dragons. moved in? Who knows what's moved in since we've been uh, evicted? <laughs> uh, all right, River, we will see. We will spare you the singing. Uh, Thank although, goodness. Although I am curious to know how it works out because many of us are just thousands and thousands of miles apart, and so there's no way that it would show up in the <laughs> in the final audio as us even singing together <laughs> so <laughs> that'd be so weird so it's Uh-oh. something i want to do in the future so if anybody here is not allergic to singing <laughs> happy birthday then uh you know we'll uh we'll get on that so <laughs> all right 
Uh, so, oh my god, you guys, the wait is almost over. Destiny almost. is less than five days away. Uh, by this time next week, we will have had over two days of possible Destiny playtime, and I plan on playing for much of that time. I might play a couple games of PvP, but my sights are set on campaign, leveling, exploration, and an overall understanding of what Destiny actually is. How much time are you guys looking to put into those two days before our show next week, uh, and on what? Golly, how much? As much so- as I can, exploration as much as I can. Right. Leveling. I, I want to I get to the vault. Good luck. Well, I don't expect to get there in two days, of course. Well, that's but, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I do. That, that's my primary goal. Is I know <laughs> I can go back and explore for ten years. I can. I'll have, you know, thousands of virtual acres to cover. But I, I don't expect to be anywhere near world first or anything. But getting to that vault would just be epic. <sighs> I agree. I yeah, agree. I'll, I'd like to. I'd like to check it out. Like I just want to see what all the what all the hubbub is about. You know, like I want to see these. <clears throat> I want to see these tests in action. Right. Uh, so I'm right there with you. Uh, so what do you think that? Uh, what do you think the highest level of any of us will be? Any of us six? Uh, because I don't know. Even if we played for 48 straight hours, <laughs> I don't know. I, I I imagine that we will have to have gotten to 20 by then. Does anybody think that that's too high or too low? In a full 48 hours? Yeah. No. No, which one? Because I'm, I'm <laughs> no, I don't think we're gonna reach twenty in a full forty-eight hours. I don't, I don't think that at all. I mean, it took me. Let's see, I probably played the beta like fifteen hours, and yeah, we were at level eight. But I think I might have got some more crap, uh, maybe like level twelve, level thirteen in fifteen hours. And I believe they're probably gonna stretch out the leveling process a little bit longer so that we stay in our levels longer. So uh, I don't, I don't think we're gonna reach twenty in forty-eight hours. Good luck with that. I think that it depends, depends on, on your you type. On yeah, the type of play that you actually do. Like if you're chain running story missions, you're going to go much faster than if you're going back to the tower and turning in engrams and stuff like that. So if you keep going, you can go probably, I'd say, near the end of the start of the second day, you'll start to see 20s. Interesting. Yeah, well, and, you know, you've also got hard modes, too. I mean, if you're with a mm-hmm. fire team that's pretty experienced, you'll be running everything hard mode if you can. Right. And you I'll be running hard. It. <laughs> <laughs> it is someone's birthday. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll be running hard <laughs> mode whenever we freaking get the game, man. <laughs> You know, wake up with a kickstand. Great. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So, uh, so let's let's get an hour count. Uh, let's see, Preston. So, how many how many hours would you say that you will you will attempt to put into this? Well, as far as I know, I got to get the disc at midnight, and then I still have to uh, download it into the hard drive, right? Yep. Damn it. Well, and there's then, a little. And then there's a little bit of my soul. Right, and then you have to download whatever updates. Uh, yeah, you yeah, know, day yeah. one updates. Day one updates. So, as soon as that's done, I've already taken. Uh, luckily, my boss is a, he's a huge Halo fan. So when a new game comes out, we actually call it a Halo day. It's not a, it's not a sick day. <laughs> it's not a vacation day. It's not a hey my kid is home sick from school. It's a Halo day, and I've claimed a Halo day. So I will be, as much as possible. I do have two kids. I, I have two and a half. One doesn't live with me, but I have two kids who live with me and a woman who will be home all day Tuesday. So I will be a complete jerk to everyone. Say, just leave me alone. Shut up, shut up, shut up. I'm playing. And I might have like one bleeding eye, but I'm playing. I might be playing for about 18, 19 hours straight. Leo, uh, you said that you would be lucky to even get your game at this point. Like, when do you actually think that you will get it? Well... If I manage to trick Microsoft into accepting my credit card down here, I might get it on launch. If not, uh, maybe the 11th? Maybe? Man. Man, I don't that's... Get it. <clears throat> like, what, what, do you have a fake card or something? <laughs> you uh, know, it's a fake it's number. Moving on. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll say it. I'll say it. It's Jez, matter. Jez, how many hours are you going to put into this? Have you have you taken time off for okay, this? Are okay, you I'll just hold. are you just going to glue yourself to the to the screen? Due to unforeseen circumstances, I'll won't be able to do as much time off as I wanted to, but I will have the ninth off. Gotcha, gotcha. So you'll be you'll be ready. Uh, you'll be ready for the to to talk on the show then. Yeah, it will be. It'll literally be uh, work, destiny, sleep, and maybe five minute meals. Five minute meals, perfect, perfect. You know what? You could probably uh, turn meals into a shake. Like if you got yeah. like a cheeseburger and some chicken nuggets, and you could put it into a blender and then drink it. Uh, but then I guess yeah. that five minutes you spent blending it would be uh, no, probably well, you hire cheap help. To come and, and empty the bedpan and you know food process everything. <laughs> drop it into that 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 helmet with the two the two uh, beer can soup things. You know, just suck it in through a straw. Keep going. It's just sustenance. It's freaking World of Warcraft Cartman going on. Right. That's exactly oh, what I saw. You go. <laughs> <laughs> well, my favorite thing to do is probably just make a big ass lasagna and freeze it. Then you can make that. You can. Nuke that up in like seven minutes and you're done. You're a nice. smart guy, Jez. That's too over guy. your limit, though. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be quicker, man. <laughs> well, I don't have to be watching the microwave for those seven minutes. Oh, <laughs> that's true. Touche, sir. <laughs> Touche. Uh, what do you think, Warlock? How much time are you going to be able to put in, in in the two days that we will have had it before uh, before our next show? Uh, if I'm lucky, 15 hours, if I'm lucky. Um, I am not a night person, and so I will grab my copy at midnight, go home, put it in my PS4, and sleep for five hours, get up, play for an hour, go to work, and then after I get home from work, I'll be able to play, but I gotta go to work that day. Crazy. You really think if you play for an hour, you're gonna manage to pull yourself away and go to work? Right, yeah, I'll have to. <laughs> that that is some uh, that's some moral fortitude there, Mister. I'm I'm uh, I'm a little jealous there. Right, yeah, that's uh, that's what you're on the show for, Warlock. We need that fiber. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've done it with several games, and I've hyped myself. Well, I've prepared myself to do it again. Awesome, awesome. What do you think, River? Uh, well. What was the question? <laughs> I'm so interested in what these guys have to say. I totally forgot what the freaking question was. So the, the question is, in the two days between us getting Destiny and, and the next week for our show, how much yeah. time will you have put into Destiny? Like, oh, Have you taken time geez. off of work? Or did you oh, yeah, send man. the missus on a, on a vacation somewhere nice where oh, there's no. panty and petties everywhere? Like, <laughs> no, no. I, I did take off work. I'll be taking off uh, like a whole week. Uh, so that I could play this game, but I don't expect to get, I don't know, like 48 hours in total, uh, like in the first two days or something, but, uh, let's see, geez, maybe in the first two, maybe 10 hours, maybe, I think, uh, it totally depends on how things go, but I got plenty of time. It's not going anywhere. Agreed. Agreed. I just kind of wanted to get an idea of what we could expect for next week, uh, and and everybody's about about what I figured. Uh, poor Leo, though. Poor Leo. Like, like uh, I appreciate your plight uh, because it's going to make waiting until midnight Pacific time uh, doable because <laughs> you're not playing it at all. I'll just I'll just this have to keep thinking. I have the sad corner. <laughs> right, you you're holding down I've been the sad corner. This since I came here. I, I've got my little sad corner, and then everyone will have destiny, and I still won't have destiny. <laughs> Wow. Uh, so, uh, the new live action video, what did you guys think about that? <laughs> I could watch that every single day for the rest of my life and enjoy it all over again. Yeah, you enjoyed it that much. Uh, it was I, awesome. I enjoyed it as well. Uh, I actually, I saw a couple people talking on, on Twitter about how they would watch a show of that, like a, a, uh, Oh, like a live action series? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sign me up. <laughs> well, Xbox actually tweeted that. Oh, yeah. The, the official Xbox Twitter account tweeted saying that the only problem with that trailer is they're not going to make a full length movie like that. Oh, damn them. I mean, yeah. I, I would see it. I would, I would, in a heartbeat, I would go see a movie if, it was, if that was the movie. Destiny to movie. 
Sign Judging by the reaction, it's still possible that they might think of doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, no, I want to know what's in that freaking cave. <laughs> adventure. <Agreed. laughs> it's in Brazil. <laughs> yeah. Caves yeah. lead to adventure, sir. <laughs> so true. And rocks. Uh, there have been a few sites popping up with fire team finders like that wizard came from the moon dot com uh, that I think will be very valuable resource for people looking for fire teams. Uh, Detto was talking about putting together a video on this subject, and I'm excited to see all these sources that he comes up with. If you know of a good fire team finder, let us know in the forums. Uh, I would I would say the best way to find a guardian one fire team would be to post your story in the forums and see who wants to adventure with you. Uh, you could simply post your gamer tag on, and the system you are playing on, but the most successful posts will include what you want to play, what hours of what days you want to play, and any other details you feel are relevant. Also, Shark's 3D Man is doing a great job running, uh, keeping a running list of gamer tags in our forums, sectioned off by system. So if you'd like to add your name to those who want to be found, you know where to go. Uh, do you guys have any tips for finding a fire team? Uh, I know that a couple people from that Prime Guard were, were working on some very special stuff. I watched a, uh, like a Google Hangouts of them working on that. Uh, Anything anything you guys have seen or heard about that would be helpful for people looking for a fire team? An app. All yeah, right. The, 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 the thing honestly, that, everything. Uh, yeah, go ahead. The thing that Chivlet and Riot Gear are working on looks to be quite interesting, so I can't wait to see what they come out with. Agreed. Agreed. I everything that you uh, pretty much put out there are really good tools to have. I mean, looking on the forums and sticking with whatever groups that you're interested in or that you're already a members of, trying to get to know some folks in there is probably the best way. But, you know, all these different sources that people are coming out with is great to see from the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'll be keeping an eye on that. <clears throat> I, want to, uh, I, I want to streamline the way Guardian 1 works. Uh, and and incorporating in tools like this are going to be a a, a very valuable very valuable thing. Uh, so yeah, if you have if you guys see any more or if you have uh, another idea, uh, go ahead and post that to our forums. <clears throat> uh, let's see. There is now chat available under conversations in the app and on the web page. Have any of you guys had a chance to play around with this? For two yeah, minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen I, it yeah, a little bit. I've seen the little uh, notification, so it's like kind of annoying for someone that's OCD to keep seeing notifications every <laughs> five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> right, and and uh, depending on which group you're part of, it it is absolutely only five seconds uh, because like, I signed up for that beautiful bastards, and uh, and seriously, you're you are never going to get that notification icon to go away. Actually, I, I think that there's a way ever. to. Uh, to yeah, turn off notifications. Yeah, they're in the notifications of like your profile settings. You can turn it so it doesn't show up, especially for someone that might have it set to show up on their phone. Those probably might need to change that. Yeah. Uh, and oh, really what's buggy. That? It My is. My version has been extremely buggy, especially because I'm part of the, what is it called, Marty Army group. And since the since they made the system of notifications, I have a notification from a message of that wall, which every time I go to read it, so it will get rid of the notification because I also have that OCD. It tells me I do not have the authorization to look at this, and then it keeps giving me the notification. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I got. The, I actually have the same thing from Guardian One. So you can see that we're talking, but you, you're not allowed to look at it. Exactly. That's why I sent you that uh, that screenshot of my phone. I was like, okay, that's that's oh, curious. Oh, okay. So then that must be the difference between being a member of the group and being a follower of the group. I think so. Uh, and also, I I actually had a question in case anyone here knows. Um, so there's so when a a group becomes a clan, then instead of just followers and members, it becomes followers, members, and. Clansmen. And clansmen. Clansmen, okay. Okay, clans, so, but clan mates. 
it Clan says mates. there we go it says members like like our thing went from like 75 members and then we became a clan and it went down to like eight members because that's how many people wanted to represent guardian one out of all the people that we have but i want to make sure that people who like i don't want people to have to become part i don't want people to have to sign up as under clan for guardian one while also seeing what's going on in our group uh, but I think that what you guys are both seeing is well, no, because you should you should be fine, Leo. Your view of it should be fine because you're even a you're even an no, admin. But, yeah, no, but I'm curious actually about what you're saying of uh, of the the members swap for you that happened during the beta. You suddenly started seeing the amount of members we had as the amount of clan guy- mates we have. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that it showed, didn't it showed to me at all. It showed up for, as members for lists. me. Because the yeah. people who are members, if they wanted to also be in the clan, they had to verify their clan status. Totally. Oh. Totally. So, so that would that was an extra step they had to go to. So it shouldn't have gone automatically. I mean, that's what I had to do with my clan. I had to get those guys. I had to hit them up on Facebook. Hey, guys, freaking verify your clan, you know, your clan status so that we can get this crap going. And I don't see... Mm. That's it. <laughs> uh, awesome. Yeah, I, uh, I'm curious to know more how that works. Uh, and uh, also with alliances, uh, I'm, I'm very curious to know how this whole thing works. Uh, but, but yeah, I think that I don't, I don't think we're going to see the, the full capabilities until, uh, until at least September 9th. So, uh, so yeah, we are still, we actually haven't even begun recruiting. Like we're we're so still recruiting in Guardian One that we haven't even begun, uh, and it's it's something that I do want to talk about, uh, you know. But despite my advisors telling me that we need to act now, we need to act quickly, and we need to present these jobs and positions, I really I really need to just I need to know what destiny is so that the positions and jobs we put up make sense. Uh, so in the, in, in the next two weeks, maybe not this next week, but the week after that, I will definitely have a much better idea of what destiny actually is and what, and what will be awesome to put out there. Uh, I mean, I am going to be looking for YouTubers. Actually, I'm going to be doing it in teams of three. Like I want, I want there to be three, uh, graphics guys. I want three people who who know their graphics uh, to be to present and create uh, branded Guardian One content. Uh, also, same thing with with uh, video makers. I want there to be three people who make videos for Guardian One, so that it doesn't it doesn't fall onto any one person's shoulders. Uh, and then there's collaboration. I think the idea of three people helping out on these are going to be good. Uh, a fire team, if you will. Exactly, a fire team. Uh, and so this also goes for... Um, I forgot what the third one was. Um, oh, writers. The third one was writers. I, I want to have a, a fire team of writers that will come up with you know, lingo. Like, I could sit here and blather on all day about what I want, but, but it's just... This is just the the overview. Uh, in, in addition, I'm also very interested in having um, like elites. I'm very interested in having Guardian One be represented in the world of like the Iron Banner. Like if you are a badass and you want to represent Guardian One, we will have a place for you. Uh, you know, I, I want I want everybody, all walks of life, to be able to be part of Guardian One. Um, but more on this, more on this in two weeks. I, I really want people just right now to enjoy the game and find out what it is that they really want to do. I don't want people signing up for stuff that they're not going to, they're not going to uh, want to do in two weeks. So, so more on that in two weeks. Um, but, but the, going back to the chat real quick, I think that, that the idea of being able to just poke on to Guardian, the Guardian Radio Alliance, and and in the chat say, hey, I'm ready to go do a raid right now. Who's with me? And then just having whoever happens to be sitting there 
say me 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 that sounds like a, a an amazing way of doing this instead of instead of it being you know signing up and then looking through a list who's on right now what are they doing right now and i think that this is i think that this is going to be an amazing uh an amazing system uh but moving on uh in response to our discussion of Jen Taylor being the queen of the reef, Mystic Rose pointed out at the end of the Brave New World video uh, a, a small shot of Jen Taylor in a motion capture suit at the top of some steps very similar to the steps in front of the uh, very similar to the steps in front of the queen in the E3 gameplay video so i would say that jen taylor being the queen is entirely possible and more than just a bit probable river did you have a chance to go listen to that again with fresh ears uh no i didn't but i'm freaking excited for that cuz i love her very much <laughs> <laughs> Well, if uh, you you can go watch it, go watch the end of the uh, Oh Brave New World video, and mm-hmm. I mean it's it's clearly her. She is in you know like a she's like sitting down in a seat, and it's there's some stairs. It really looks like it. So, big thanks to Mystic Rose. Thank you. Um, did you guys have a chance to check out that DestinyPlanetView.com? Nope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I looked around at it <coughs> extensively. I I enjoyed it. Yeah, I uh, I chose not to once I once I heard that I could just get the the emblem from looking at it. Like I want to go into Destiny with as little prior knowledge as possible. Like I already know too much, uh, and I don't want to know any more than I than I should. So uh, yeah. so that was cool. Uh, did you guys did you guys check out your redeemable codes are now active? Yeah, a bunch of grimoire elements. Totally. Yeah. Totally. I uh, I redeemed them, but it it said only it, it only had my Xbox um, character listed, uh, and that really wasn't what I wanted to put those on. And so I'm curious if they only link to one or the other, and how do you choose? Does anybody have any information on this? I think some of the people in my clan said that it would ask you to activate them twice. But it should have showed, like, a PlayStation symbol that you could select as well. Interesting, yeah. I signed in through my PlayStation, um, through my PlayStation side of the account, and it still went to the Xbox side. So that'll be, uh, <clears throat> that'll be interesting. Um... Stephen W. says, I posted this to the Bungie forums, but maybe you have some insight. It might be a non-issue. And then he quotes Deej, Clan members will need to reaffirm their allegiance after September 9th. We're not breaking up clans, just severing their ties to the beta. Once Destiny launches, your ranks will need to reset as a, uh, a group as their clan. Oaths will have to be taken again. He says, since there is a cap of clan tags at 75, and I've seen clans with groups slash followers well over 75, does that mean it is a first come, first serve to become a member of the clan of that clan? I have no clue, but that's what it sounds like to me. Can anyone clarify, am I reading this wrong? Uh, and to you... Stephen W., I say that as far as mechanically speaking, I think it is first come, first serve. I think that if you're a member of a group, that you can just click on, on click to set. So as far as it technically working, I think that that's exactly how it works. But I would say that that's probably not the best way of going about it for some groups. Like you, you should probably talk to the people that are in this group you know, some some clubs are going to be exclusive, uh, and I guess that if if they didn't want you to be part of that, then there would just be that you need to be authorized. So uh, so I guess if you have access to it, I, you know, I just don't even know. What do you guys think? Well, I think it's I think they might be increasing it to one hundred, but I think with larger clans, you're supposed to uh, form an alliance and a whole bunch of clans under it because they all use the alliance tag, not the individual clans okay so if you so if there's two alliances and one of them is underneath guardian one then their clan tag will say guardian one as well well i don't know if you can have an alliance under an alliance but you could have many clans under the guardian radio alliance in general and then it would be just guardian radio for everyone 
So everybody underneath a specific uh, underneath a specific alliance is it it captures that same. That sounds pretty cool. I think that sounds pretty cool. Well, that's how he described it. That you would have like uh, a certain clan or certain clan for one particular task. One f- like this is this group of people. This is this group of people. They're all under the alliance under the same tag. That's how it was originally. I'm not sure if that's how it's going to be when live, but it's kind of like this is Omega Team, this is you know Alpha mm-hmm. Team, and this is freaking yeah that sort of thing. I like yeah, it. I I would like it if if like they had your clan tag and then underneath your alliance tag, like in your emblem. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That would be cool. Um, all right, so so there you have it, Stephen W. Thanks for writing in. Uh, Blue Mayhem wrote, I'm interested in how all six classes will work together in the coming months. With a good mix, what can a full fire team accomplish? Also, I'm curious to see what the panel's take on the expansion pack is. I'd like to hear their thoughts. Uh, as would I, and I would like to add, I would like to see what a bad mix of guardians is capable of like what if you got you know all if everybody was a defender titan you know how would that look (laughs) and can that team make it through the can that team make it through the uh through the the raid uh and i'd say probably not but who what do i know what no way i bet you they could i bet you they tried their ass off they could probably do it yeah, I was watching Datto earlier, and he said, you know, honestly, if you took you know, six gunslingers, they'd have a hard time, but they could probably pull it off as long as they were good and, and they were coordinated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah, I was also under the impression. Most of your damage is from your abilities, or from your guns anyways. Your guns, exactly. So I was talking with Remy earlier, and I was like, you know, why wouldn't you just take six defenders, you know, or six strikers? I know it, it sounds, like, you know, kind of goofy, but why, why go at something with a scalpel when you can hit with a meat tenderizer? Well, I mean, even with the di- well, there, there is a logic the- to think about it. Remember that they are saying that there are metaphorical keys you have to solve. So if there are puzzles, maybe I don't. Know, <laughs> a certain class could get it because you need to hit it with a super, or you need to do a certain jump, or right. some weird mechanic to force you. Right. I think the only thing that might force is weapon. Element types, which yeah, you can carry multiple. Too. Right, I was thinking something similar to that. So, and that, if, and if and you that. made it, if if they had made the raids where, like, you know, one part of the raid you had to have, you know, a dancer to blink across a gap, that or you know, like it had to be blinked through a wall or something. I don't know. That that would lock out any any raid team that didn't have a dancer, and that 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 kind of goes against everything I've seen so far. So, like like you said. Well, as long as the elements are there and the guns should be able to pull it off. I think that way, that's a, I think that that's the extreme coordination and pre and pre prep. That is something they talk a lot about that you have to prepare for the raid beforehand and that's talking true. about how you go sort of go in. If you run into a raid group and see what they're doing, cause it's part of that preparing before right. instead of if it's just guns, I can have a bunch of guns in my inventory and start swipping in and out. And start fixing things on the fly. But it does seem that the raids... But I don't know. This is all me guessing randomly. Right. Uh, no, the devil's no. advocate. That maybe you would need by force to have, I don't know, a hunter. Because if a hunter doesn't stand in this position, a titan in this position, and a warlock dancing in the background, the door just won't open. Right. It, it's it's possible. They can be counterintuitive, though. Like most... Most, uh, like, got to go back to MMOs, even though it's not an MMO. But right. these types of team-based situations, they always say, bring the player, not the class. That's what they say, and then half the time they don't really pull it off. Well, <laughs> that's back in the MMO universe, yeah, I know what you mean. Most, most MMOs are still stuck to the Holy Trinity anyways. They have yeah. to have tanks and healers. Right, right. I was reading, uh, I was reading like, comments and stuff. Like, I watched a lot of Datto today, and... I read a lot of people just saying, hey, look, there goes the warlock. He does his thing, and then he's dead. Bring a titan. Hey, look, there goes you know, <laughs> a slinger. He's dead. Bring a titan. I just kept saying, like, bring the titan, bring the titan for rezzing. I was like, well, why don't you just take six titans? 
<laughs> I, it, it was just like you know, like a like a modest thought in my head. I was like, really, if everyone's just gonna rely on Titans to survive, why don't you just roll six of them? So, you know, I'm I'm interested in doing that. I'm interested in going through as all Titans. So if you're on PlayStation Four and you're looking to play a Defender Titan through the raids, uh, hit me up because <laughs> because that'll be fun. I think uh, because Titans kick ass. We built the wall. Uh oh. <laughs> There's a problem with this call, and it's Leo. All right, so so I have chosen the Defender Titan as as the the first thing that I'm heading for right out the gate. Like I I played around with the idea of of uh, the Sun Singer Warlock, uh, and and I will be going there because it's it is a beautiful class. Uh, but I really I really want to to fill out this uh, Defender Titan uh, and really the Titan overall, just because I feel like, I feel like this is what's calling to me. You know, this is the class that's speaking to me. Uh, River, you are a hunter. Which hunter are you mm-hmm. going with? I'm going to go with the Blade Dancer. Blade Dancer Hunter. All right. So yes. Warlock, what are you? I am primarily Void Walker Warlock, but uh Situation requires I will be a support uh, fire singer. Interesting, interesting. So, so then, okay, Jez, you are a hunter. Which hunter are you? Chidori. Oh, oh. sorry, blade dancer. <laughs> har har. Okay, so we got okay, two so blade got- dancers. We got one void tight or void warlock. Uh, and Leo, what have you decided have to, you go with? to go with? <laughs> I am exactly like our other friendly warlock in this group. I am primarily a void walker, but if the group needs it, I will change to a support class. I I like the idea of of um I like the idea of people just bringing what they want to play. Uh and for there to be two void walkers here is pretty crazy. Uh Preston, which you were saying Sunsinger is your is your class of choice? Like I said, you know, I haven't played the game, but I went to the database and looking at all the talents, the Sun Singer really speaks to me. But I'm definitely going to roll a defender. I want a bubble. Like I, I played a paladin tank, and wow, I, it, it seems very, very similar. And I, I'm a paladin with a gun. The only thing I didn't like about the Titan is it feels like I'm still a Spartan. Like all that cloth that all the other classes get is something I'll be jealous about. But other than that, I'm game. I'm going to be a defender and probably a Sun Singer. Interesting, interesting. I think that uh, I think that you'll be able to make it through with with um, just whatever you have. I think that the first the first version of the raid, the regular version of the raid, you won't the uh, the perks that you can do for other people won't necessarily mean something uh, as much as they will in the hard mode. Right. Uh, so, actually, Preston, you were you brought up earlier to me. Uh, what about orbs of light in uh, in Rumble Pit? Uh, yeah, I and so it Rumble Pit. I'm but... curious to know what the rest of this panel thinks about that. Do you think that that you will generate orbs uh, in the the in the Rumble Pit in, in PvP, or do you think that because you're not on anyone's team that you won't generate any orbs for anyone? Right. I, I was referring to the single-player PvP, because a lot of PvP is team-based, and then the orbs would probably still take place. But I do know there's, you know, everyone versus everyone, classic Rumble Pit style. I wondered if orbs have any use in there. So what do you think, River? I think because it is Rumble Pit and it's everybody for themselves, you yourself are not getting any benefit by generating orbs. Mm-hmm. But everybody else will, and that's their opportunity to kind of, you know, shadow you if you're doing really good. And to try to keep the balance of the gameplay going, uh, you know, maybe the guy in the first isn't always going to be first. He's still going to be fighting for that because everybody else is getting the orbs that he's generating. Right. I see yeah. it as another. I see it as another almost. Uh, what was that oddball? You yeah, know, where like the, a, right. those oh, guys what? are carrying around those headhunter. Yeah, like headhunter. headhunter. Kind of like that. That's kind of how it sounds. Interesting. The better you do, the more of a handicap you set. But that that would be interesting, right? Yeah. Wouldn't that be interesting? <laughs> but at the same time, at the same time, 
I don't know. I, I think it would be funny. I think well, do it would you, be when funny. you're when you're playing solo in like a story mission by yourself, do you generate orbs? It's a good question. You mean when you go beyond the uh, when you go from the public area into the into the the actual dungeon itself? Yeah, like if if you're by yourself, I I'm not sure if you generate orbs because there'd be no reason because you can't pick them up. I don't know if they'll generate orbs in that uh, PvP I, for you. I have the idea that when you were alone in one of those locked private areas, uh, that it would I would still get the message saying, even though I was completely alone, nobody was in my fire team. They would say, Psycher Latitude X generated three orbs of light or generated two orbs of light. Interesting. But again, this was also the beta, so they don't. They might not want to push all the systems, and it's easier just to leave a default um, action. Yeah, yeah. Rather than say when you're specifically here doing this alone, you can't generate orbs. Just leave it like yep. normal. That makes mm-hmm. sense. But we'll find out soon. Very soon. We will find out soon. Yeah. Before we meet again. Before we meet again next week, uh, and that's so exciting. I'm so excited. I can't Stop believe that it. we've. I can't believe that we've that we've had all of this to talk about uh, up until now. And then you look at you look at Guardian Radio, and next week is their 77th episode. How do you talk about something <laughs> for 77 episodes that isn't out yet? It's only on the periphery, for real, right? I think hey man, uh, if we of... recorded our sessions, we'd be up to like episode fifty before we started the podcast. Yeah, well, that's true. They, they get a lot true. of help from the community. I mean, I know I started listening to them oh, early on, and I always send in the emails all the time. Man, and was part of the forums, so I think they get a lot of a lot of their good stuff from the community. Community is really important for this kind of stuff. Yeah, they read one of your uh, letters on Monday. Did you hear? Oh yeah, I sh- certainly did, and I'm glad they did because I, I really wanted to hear what they what they really thought about it. What was the question? Do you remember? <clears throat> the question was uh, referring back to episode four because I, you know, I like to listen to Guardian Radio every now and then. But they were talking about the meaning of the title Destiny. Why did Bungie pick the title as Destiny? Because they, you know, Bungie they have hidden meanings and everything, and it was just this huge conversation that was going on between Watts, Mark, and Derek. And I wanted to know, since they were hitting up episode 76, you know, freaking, that's what, 72 podcasts in between? Yeah. What they think, knowing now, I mean, you know, knowing now, what do they think the title Destiny means? That was it. You know, I, I think that when I, when I first heard that it was called Destiny, I thought to myself, what, a, what an amazingly generic title. You know, like mm-hmm. it's it, it just like Halo, you know, like what is this game about? Who who knows? You know, who knows what this game is about? Uh, but then like you you look at it and it's such a it's such a normal word. It's, it's just I don't know. I think it's perfect. They really couldn't have named it anything else. And I have no idea how they're going to top hate this. for this. But my first first thought, my first thought when I heard it was that, wow, that's kind of pretentious. Totally. Mm hmm. Totally agreed. Yeah, that's what's <laughs> I mean, playing on PlayStation, you get, you hear. Even though, even though I've played Halo and I, and I like it, you hear. Wow, that's just a dude bro shooter. Because mm-hmm. that's you always hear about <laughs> land parties dude, and college bro. dorms. <laughs> you never heard that term before. I never heard that before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, it's a dude bro shooter. <laughs> well, just very like grab a beer and let's play. Some you know what's Halo funny is is I I've, I've heard that before, but I've never heard Jez say it. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, man, that's great. Nah, I, I I never thought of it as a dude bro shooter at all. You know, come on, man, let's go freaking shoot up some Halo. <laughs> Yeah. I think I think uh, around here it was it was probably the most common land game and by college kids, so that's where I got it, got that stigma. <laughs> I like it. Oh. Well, even though they laid their uh, their generalizations all over, at least they had good taste, right? Yeah, it wasn't wasn't Madden or 
or uh, Call of Duty. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so we're we're getting close to the time, uh, but I wanted to uh, I wanted to share a story with you guys, uh, and feel free to ask me questions because uh, some of it might not, some of the questions might jog my memory in some of this uh, because there was inebriation involved. But I was invited to last Friday. Uh, I was invited to this thing called the Guardians Ball. <clears throat> and uh, I was invited by Deej, <clears throat> and and it was it was kind of like a a private party, like they they bought out this cantina, um, and and I went down there. <clears throat> it was really crazy because uh, I decided to take the bus because I figured if there was going to be drinking, I didn't want to drive, and because I wanted to get smashed. And then I could Space tell these bus. people. <laughs> then I could tell these people what I really thought about them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and so it was crazy because it started out with this bee attacking my daughter, like at the bus station. But it was like straight out of Pokemon. Like I even heard the. Were you already drunk when this happened? No, no. Jeez, all right. And I almost missed the bus because of this, but luckily I made it down there, and I. I was sitting down on this uh, this bench outside because I had shown up early, and Deej came out and and he is uh, he's one swell guy. Like he came over and he even knew who I was. He was like Remy Auxiliary, and he gave me this great handshake and then told me to find my find my way in. And so <laughs> I I went in and I introduced myself to the bartender, a uh, really uh, really awesome young lady named Sarah. Uh, always introduce yourself to the bartender. They're the ones that are going to be taking care of you when you're puking yeah. in the bathroom, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, and I saw Irk like it, at the very beginning. It was just me and Irk, and Irk was talking to some other guy at the bar. And I hadn't really, I hadn't started drinking at that point, so I didn't, I couldn't just be like, "What's up, dude?" <laughs> Although by the end of the night, <laughs> by the end of the night, that was, <laughs> I think that's how I greeted Jason Jones, <laughs> but. <clears throat> <laughs> but uh, so like I I started uh, I started drinking and then these two guys came in two guys from uh, Team Reality Check they were in the Halo Two anniversary tournament uh, and I guess that they they lost to to these to this other team but I think they made it to the very end uh, but they were cool guys they gave me some some warheads they were sponsored by warheads Sadoth one and two I think is. Uh, is their their yeah. Twitter time? You know who I'm talking about, Jez? Yeah, I think number two follows me. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, so the night the night moves on, and I've I've had a couple of beers, and I'm 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 seeing the people that I recognize, uh, you know, from from the the Vidox and things from over the years, uh, and I see Lars. I see Lars back, and and he's he's talking to some people, and uh, and I walk up. I walk up and like I wanted to be respectful of these people's space, but I really wanted to chit chat. I really wanted to talk, uh, and I'll tell you every single every single one of these guys that I walked up to, uh, it, there was that initial there was that initial why are you walking up to me kind of feeling like I'm a stranger, you know. And uh, uh, but I had the greatest conversation with that Lars Becken about about what destiny is and what it means to me. Uh, and actually I, every, every Bungie employee that I, that I managed to talk to, uh, I, I walked up to him and I, and I told them two things and I actually, this was part of my, this was part of my, my talking to them was saying the number one, congratulations, because the more I think about it, what an amazing, what an amazing thing this is right now for everybody who's been working on Destiny. Like this is a brand new game. This isn't a, this isn't a sequel. This isn't something where we already have these expectations. Like, like they are creating this brand new thing, uh, and it's got to be the most amazing feeling. And number two, uh, that the Xbox 360 version of the game was amazing. Uh, because I, I imagine that there was a lot of people on the team whose whose goal was to not produce a crappy port of Destiny, um, and it actually it actually really hit home to quite a few people. A couple people looked at me like, oh, "Okay, you know, like 
I don't know why that's something you want to tell me. And then the other half of the people were like, I'm so glad that you said that because because this is something that we had to aim for. Because I was going back and forth from the PlayStation 4 version to the Xbox 360 version and loving it both times. Like the only time I knew that I was playing the Xbox 360 version was when inventory didn't load from the inventory screen right away. You know, and, and I thought to myself, why is it taking so long to load? And then I'd remember that I was playing the 360 version. But while I was aiming down the gun, uh, it, was, it was really awesome. Uh, yeah, so I had, I had a really great conversation <clears throat> with Lars. I, I think probably the, the, the most awesome thing talking to these people is that once you got over that initial, why are you talking to me? And I'm not saying that in a way that like they thought that they were better than me, but they just wanted to know why I was talking to them. Once you got past that and they, they recognized that what I was talking about, they also wanted to talk about, they just they just started talking like it like like you and i do like like we all do like destiny 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 uh and <laughs> and it was it i'm happy that nobody even in their drunken stupors uh didn't say anything that i shouldn't know uh and actually i prefaced a lot of questions with if you have to tell me to kick rocks I'll kick rocks, but this is, you know, I, I wanted them to know what I wanted to talk about. Uh, so I had a really great conversation with him, uh, and then somebody else came over, and, and so I let them go, and I, I took a step back. And then I saw Datto and Alan uh, walk in front of me, and I was like, Alan, you know, Datto, what's going on? You know, uh, Remy. Uh, and and we hung out and had such great conversation. Like I, <laughs> I, I, I made sure to tell Datto that I thought that his vi his videos are are amazing, because because when it comes down to what I would expect to see in the manual, he goes above and beyond that. You know, like he's breaking it down to number graphs and and uh, y you know he's figuring out. He's reverse engineering Destiny, and he's explaining it to everybody. And so, I don't know, Datto has amazing videos. Love Datto's videos. And then I, then I turned to Alan and I said, I said, and how is it that you are able to talk about nothing for so long? <laughs> 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 and, and he said, and he, and he laughed, and he like rolled his eyes. I'm like, wait a second, wait a second. I think that might have... I think that might have come out wrong, you know, like <laughs> what I'm saying is that like that Bungie gives us scraps, you know, like how do you continue to make videos based on the scraps that that Bungie has placed in front of us? And he says, I know what you mean. Uh, but I said, honestly, though, like and then I turned to Dato and I'm like, how does he do it? You know, like, how do you how do you sound excited and make it sound like it's not the same video you just put out? And have it not be the same video that you just put out? Like, I don't I don't tire of watching Ellen's videos. Uh, but I don't know. It's it's a talent. Both of them are supremely talented, and I spent a quite a I spent quite a lot of the night hanging out with them. It was kind of a uh, they were kind of like home base. Like I'd see somebody. Like I was I was chit chatting with them, and then I saw that Jason Jones, and I I knew that before he left, I wanted to go say hi to him. And so I walked over to him, and I stuck out my hand, and I said congratulations. Uh, and then he said, you know, like we we hope. You know, like I hope, and he crossed his fingers. Uh, but he was still in the conversation with somebody else, uh, and so I, I just moved on. Uh, but then I saw him just a small time later, walking by himself. Amazingly, I can't believe he wasn't swamped. And I just like sprung like a cheetah. I was like, Jason Jones. <laughs> then I said, uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I told him I could see the future. <laughs> oh God. Um, but no, like I, I, I told him the same thing that I, I was telling everybody. I, I, I said that, you know, congratulations because, because honestly, this is a, this is a big deal, you know, like imagine all of the, like, like, look at all of the destiny community that they've whipped into a frenzy with what they're doing. Uh, but, but I didn't get through my whole speech, uh, and somebody came over and, and was like, oh, look, Jason Jones, this is Datto from Datto Does Destiny. Uh, and I don't, I don't want to be this Klingon. I don't want to be this person where, you know, like, oh, talk to me, talk to me. Like, I either want to talk to you or I'll just go do something else. That's fine. You know, like, you have a lot of people to talk to. Um, 
so then I I just went on my merry way, and I actually saw uh, Natasha from the from the Out Here in the Wild documentary, uh, and her husband Joe, who both both work at uh, Bungie, uh, and I had some really great conversations with them too. Uh, and it's you know it's it's sad because I can't remember specifically what we talked about, uh, but. It was a really great conversation, but during that conversation, Jason Jones actually came up, uh, came up to me and was like, "Hey, you know, like I'm sorry I got pulled away." Uh, and I'll tell you right now, that was cloud nine. You know, like he came and found me to finish our conversation, uh, and so I told him, I said, I said, uh, you know, like like this is going to be huge, and he's like, "Well, you know, like I, we really, we really hope so," and I said, "Look at." I said I played. Uh, I said I got to be part of uh, user research in 2013, uh, and I have not wanted to play anything since. Like coming back from that from that user research at Bungie, like I haven't wanted to play a game since then. Um, and I said I, I looked at him. I said I said you know what I'd really like to do uh, waiting for Destiny. I said I would really like to be able to finish Skyrim. I said. Let me finish Skyrim, Jason Jones. <laughs> 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 uh, and then I said, I can't, I can't do it. All I want to do is play, is play Destiny. And he said, Well, let's let's hope that there's other people out there like you. And and that's when I told him, I said, I said, Are you kidding? I said, I can see into the future. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, but seriously, like like who here doesn't think that Destiny is going to absolutely Make a dent like like Titanfall is going to be a, a ghost town, you know, like like Call of Duty is going to be a ghost town. You know, you're going to see like like Halo three numbers <laughs> in all these other games uh, when Destiny comes out. So uh, so that was really cool. Actually, by that point in the night, I had I decided that I didn't I didn't want to talk to anybody for too long because I didn't. I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to bother anybody. So what I started to do was I started to nuke the conversation uh, with my interest of what's going on. Like like so with Jason Jones, I said, I said, you know what? I'm really excited about Jason Jones. And he said, what's that? I said, I'm excited about the Solar Titan. Let's talk about the Solar Titan uh, <laughs> because because while it hasn't been announced, I can only assume that you know that's going to be something that we see in the future, you know? And so he smiled and he said to me, I should probably get going before I start talking. Uh, and so, uh, and so, and so, I mean, it's, it's, it's clear that it's clear that, that they have so much in mind for destiny uh, and they're just going to keep their lips sealed. Like, like who knows, are we going to see a solar Titan? Like it's, it, I've, I've thought about it and it's possible that, that Titans just don't get the solar you know, uh, the, the solar power, you know, Bungie's uh, kind of like a good writer. He leaves lots of loose ends to let they could fill in the gaps later if they need to or want to. Right. Right. Cause uh, they're planning this thing, you know, like I said, for the next years, they're leaving right? a lot of things open ended just so that they can build that foundation. Like we stated in previous podcasts. Exactly. Exactly. And, and it's something that they've been thinking about for a long time. Like they have, they have top people on this. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was really a great night. It was really, it, oh, and, and so I did that. That's actually how I, uh, that's actually how I ended quite a few conversations was, was talking about like, like, oh, if you have two defender Titans, do the, do the bonuses that people get when they walk through, do those stack? You know, like things like this, things like, you know, like that we will find out at some point, but we're not there yet. I like that river sun slammer. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> but I had I had really the, the greatest, the greatest hangout times with all of these people. Uh, Jason Sussman, I got to, I got to hang out and talk to him. He seemed really interested in what I had to say. Uh, and I, I like I want to tweet to these people like, oh, I saw you at this thing. But I again, I don't want to be a bother. You know, I don't want to be like clingy and and lame uh i also got to talk to cooley uh he was really cool there was actually quite a few guys from ttl there uh and they showed up in um they showed up in suits 
Uh, but I got to I got to talk with Luke Smith. He was really fun to talk to. Uh, and and each of these people just had so much to to riff back and forth. You know, like they just there was just so much that that they wanted to talk about as well. Uh, and so I feel really honored to have gone. Uh, and I thank Deej for inviting me. Uh, and and you guys should have seen him too, because while there was while there was a large amount of alcohol flowing and a lot of a lot of people doing crazy shit, uh, it was funny watching. It, there was like still a chain of command. Like people would go up to him and ask him if they were allowed to tweet out things. Like that, Jason Sussman had had something he wanted to tweet out, and like Deej would go from like smiling and having a great time to like this really super focused. <laughs> this really super focused I'm not even messing around yes or no and then and then he'd go back to having fun it was really cool I mean, they've got a really they've got a really good gatekeeper <laughs> in Deej so so yeah I, I uh, <clears throat> that's it for this uh, episode of Guardian 1 uh, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in and uh, if you have any questions send them to feedback at guardian1.net. Let's uh let's do a quick shout out. Preston, what do you got? All right, we lost Preston. He's too jealous. <laughs> because I am are. too. Yeah, everybody, even in <laughs> even those in the chat, we're all jelly of you. I hate you. The party was amazing. The party I'm was sure amazing. Was. You yeah, know, I should have been there. <laughs> Leo, shout out. Uh shout out seriously to Shark 3D men. Uh, he's been doing a great job in the forums and on Twitter. Pl- check out his Twitter handle. Exact same thing. Uh, look for him. And also, I want to give a shout out to Bad Oba. Some of you may have heard about him on Guardian Radio. It's a. This is a really great guy. He contacted me. I know this is going to go a bit long. But he contacted me by message one day to ask about a post I made a billion years ago saying that we should make a Bife honey game. And asked me if I was actually working on one. Which, to anyone that knows me, I have no such talent in the history of mankind to do anything like that. And he, would, and he took that much dedication to make sure nobody else was doing it so he could go out and work on one. And if you haven't checked out his game, please check it out. It is incredible. Just go out, try it, download it, give the guy tips. I mean, trust me, Bad Oba, uh, Bob Oba, sorry. He's been doing a great job. Uh, so, yeah. I just want to do a, another shout out to Chivlet and Riot Gear for that podcast that they've been doing, doing the progress of their group finder that you were talking about earlier. Yeah. Awesome. I'll post a link to their channel after. Do it to it. More luck. You know, I want to just uh, give a shout out to everyone in the community, um, especially some of the ones I've gotten to know um, just recently with Guardian One podcast launching and stuff. And a shout out to Bungie because this has been an excellent journey and the next five days will go by kind of slow, but uh, I'm excited for the, the adventures and journeys that we'll have in Destiny. So thanks everyone for being awesome and thank you Bungie for Destiny. River. I want to give a shout out to whoever played that hunter in that live action trailer for Destiny. Ooh. That guy. I mean, we've been hearing all kinds of stuff like check out my warlock swag, bro, and crap like that. But did you see that hunter in the freaking trailer? How he freaking brushed himself off? Uh, he just popped his up and popped his freaking cow. That <laughs> swagger, man. You can't forget. That's why I was like. Do you even blink, bro? <laughs> <laughs> that guy was so badass. Oh, that's, that's it. I like it. I like it. That's a good one. Preston, are you still here? I think you're muted. I am muted. Hey! So, so were you starting to give a shout out when I asked I you? Was, and everyone started talking over me. I'm like, well, fine. <laughs> oh, my shout out was to alcohol. Without alcohol, you wouldn't have been able to see the future. It was what would have done. That's, come on. Right? Right, the great like Homer that. Simpson, the beginning and end of all problems. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. So, uh, as for the mute, 
I would like to thank everyone listening for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the show. If you have any questions or comments, please send them to feedback at guardian1.net. And thank you to everyone at Bungie for creating a game that has brought so many people together. It is going to be a very fun 10 years, and I am excited about supporting Destiny by holding up this section of the wall. When next we meet, Destiny will be ours for the taking. Paradasia at Astra. We will see you next week. Bye, guys. Good night now. Bye-bye.